Glen Helen Raceway will be the second stop of the 2017 Outdoor Nationals. 48 hours before the crowds arrive on race day, the top racers are given a unique opportunity to practice on what is considered the fastest and most dangerous track on the circuit. Track getting nice and rough a little? The track was a little bit too aggressive at the end. That's typical, yeah. It was less than a week ago when Eli Tomac went undefeated in the opening round, making the practice session at Glen Helen, Marvin Muscan's and Team KTM's only opportunity to search for answers. I need him to understand that he now does take on the leadership role. What about some feedback here on what do you feel? It's important to try things to help. I also find that when you are under the gun, it forces us to be better. Dean Wilson has been off the entry list for several years due to a string of devastating injuries. He is finally healthy and determined to make a comeback. To say I'm injury prone, it's probably true. If someone said it, I probably wouldn't argue with them. But the turning point for me and why I did come back was just to prove everybody wrong. The highs in the sport overcome the lows. Dean used to be so creative on a track that you go, oh man, I never even thought about that line there. That is coming back slowly but it is coming back. These are the times that aren't so good when you're um, a professional motocrosser. There's highs and lows, and these are definitely the lows. Six years ago, Dean Wilson won a 250 outdoor title and was recruited by KTM for his premier class debut a top-tier factory, and with teammates such as Ryan Dungey and Marvin Muscan, it seemed that Dean's dream of a 450 career was on track. When he had the ride with KTM, I think he put a lot of stress on himself. And then when he got the first injury, it was devastating because in his head, you know, he's like, well, here we go. And then when the knee came out again, he was destroyed. He knew he was done with the team, with Dean, he had basically only raced seven races in the two years we had had him, so we didn't know. But when we made our decision, Dean was hurt and had been hurt for a long time. And then you never quite know how they're going to recover. Obviously, it never worked out or else he would still be there. But unfortunately, he got two injuries in a row. And being on a factory team, you have to produce that you can be at least a top five guy. And if you're not doing that, you're not good enough. There were some really, really tough days. I offered to ride for free for a couple teams, and they wouldn't accept me. For someone to say that they'll ride for you for free and risk their life and still get shut down, it's like, all right, I guess I'm doing it on my own. It's like so degrading. Wilson and his father, Andy, did all of Dean's off-season preparation and start of the Supercross season using their own funds hoping Dean's results would be good enough to land him a paid racing contract in the future. I'm just gonna be honest, I don't have a great education. And if I don't race, I'll have to do a job that I'll probably have to work pretty hard at and not make anywhere near the money that I would be making racing. So this is all I really know. Obviously you need to get paid for what you do. It's really a matter of survival. I wouldn't have came back as a privateer if I didn't truly believe that I still had it in me to be successful at racing. Several rounds into the Supercross season, Dean's results caught the attention of Husqvarna's team manager, Bobby Hewitt, who offered Wilson the chance to ride a factory bike and a salary. When I called him, he was actually sitting at the track and I said, uh, I think you'd be interested in riding a Husqvarna. Oh my God, yes. You know, he, do you want me to come right now? He was just overly ecstatic. Honestly, I just went like this. Yes, after I hung up. If you have multiple injuries in a row, it takes time to get those ghosts out of your head. I believe it takes two hours for every hour you're off the bike injured to get back to where you were. For us mentally, we can't just think like, the next time we get on our bike, we're gonna get injured. You can't think like that. I think a lot of the reasons why maybe I got injured was I feel like I could have lacked a little bit of focus, but I worked really hard with my trainer, Tyler Rattrain. I would say the injury prone part of me is a stage of my life that is over and hopefully never have to talk about it. 
I wasn't. Nice you save such less energy when you come in, you just go rah. You're just touching the ground once and then you're hitting the roller into the turn. You jump like three bumps. Glen Helen's gonna be like this, dude. It's gonna be big holes and ruts. It is race day at Glen Helen. And although it's a local track that Dean has ridden more than any other throughout his career, he still asks for mentorship from his longtime friend, Sam Hall, a member of his inner circle since amateurs. You were not anyway off the pace. I think you're right there with it. Just, uh, just find a couple of lines that are a little bit less taxing, and I think you'll be good. I met Dean when he was still riding 85s, even though he's had a lot of success on the 250. I think the real success is going to come right in the 450 class. While Dean is fighting to rebuild his body and mind amidst the brutality of the outdoors, Marvin Muscan came to Glen Helen searching for the speed and confidence to beat Eli Tomac, a rider who has appeared unstoppable in the recent months. Well, Eli Tomac, uh, since he moved up to the 450 class, he was able to win races, and this year definitely he's the number one and he proved it in Supercross. And and now already in outdoors, so. It is a certain pressure, but at the same time, it's good pressure and extra motivation. I want to do even better for the team and myself. You got to be ready to go a bit more because Eli did have a 21-8. Yeah. So I saw Eli also get a little bit sideways and then he couldn't jump the finish line because he went too far over the wall. Eli's fast, for sure. Um, is he beatable? Everyone's beatable. I feel like something that mommy needs to still walk on is he just needs to, to believe in himself. And I feel like I believe in him more than he believes in himself sometimes, you know, and he knows what he can do, but sometimes he just needs to know it a little bit more, you know, and he won a few super crazy this year, so now, like, his only goal is to win. Off and underway into that first turn they go. Who's going to grab that whole shot? The Red Bull KTM of Marvin Muscat. He came off the line like a shot. Muscan picking up the pace down the stretch. Marvin known as a very smooth, very calculated rider, but he is letting it hang out right now. Where is Dean Wilson? Dean Wilson did not get the best of starts, was back around 10th, maybe as far back as 11th position. You can't help but cheer for Marvin Muscan. He is now up to a nine second lead. And now able to cruise to the line. Marvin Muscan wins his first career 450 photo. Everything looked calculated. It was a really good ride. I'm happy. <laughs> really happy. Start was good. I mean, you got your shitty moto out of the way and you finished sixth. That's pretty good. It's not like I'm out here and I'm just hoping that it all falls into place for him. I really, truly believe he's going to be on the podium very soon and I just want to help get him there quicker. Moto number two, just out of the start shoot. Out of turn number one they go. Where is Eli Tomac? Oh, you see that? Tomac off the track, I think he stalled. A disaster for Eli Tomac. He is for certain not going to be the points leader when it's over. In the second moto at Glen Helen, Tomac's front brake locked up early in the race, pushing him back to a 19th place finish, while Marvin Muscan charged from seventh place to third, giving him his first overall victory in the premier class. For the first time, Marvin Muscan is an overall winner in the 450 class of Lucas Oil Pro Motocross. Really good day. Thank you. Awesome. Congratulations. Once you win one or two races and you believe you can do it, then you're on your way. It's unbelievable what confidence does for you. Dean Wilson's sixth and seventh place moto finishes gave him fourth overall at Glen Helen. While this is an unglamorous position for a former champion, those close to him believes it's a necessary step towards Wilson becoming a contender once again. With Dean, I know he has the ability. I know it with all my heart. I know the commitment that he has. That's the reason he got the phone call, but it's going to take some time. The appreciation for what I have now, when I've got it all taken away from me, wasn't the most ideal situation, but it was something that I think's really helped me as a person. What I hope for is just to get through every race without getting injured. <laughs> At one time I was such maybe a moto dad or whatever, and uh, you say, Dean, you weren't even top five, what? Today, I'm a different guy. I'm just so happy that you've finished the moto in the one piece. Changing uh, maturity. <laughs>